All right, so I was asked to do some demos for some of the problems in your book. We're going to take a look at an example that is like chapter 12, number 24, in which you have two treatment groups that you're trying to compare in terms of their average response on some outcome. So again, you can contextualize this, you know, they don't give you anything more than treatment groups and some outcome. But you could imagine, you know, if it's number of depression symptoms and whether or not they were on an antidepressant, right? It doesn't really matter. And that's why your book just wants you to practice the math. But again, it's all about context. So if you have two groups, these groups are somehow distinct from one another. Group one and group two are two separate groups of people getting different types of treatment. You've then measured some outcome for them, right? So, you know, maybe this is the number of depressive symptoms they showed in the last week, right? Maybe this is a placebo group and this is a antidepressant group. They're taking like an SSRI or something. So that's the kind of thing you're looking at. And they're trying to have you compare what happens if you do a T-test or an F-test. And what you're going to find out is a T-test and F-test will give you the exact same answer in the independence T-test or between subjects analysis of variance uh, if you only have two groups. The thing that ANOVA does is it allows you to have more than two independent groups. So if you had the data in this structure, like it's given to you in number 24, you could simply use the data analysis options in Excel to analyze this very quickly. Now they give you some summary statistics that you can use to like do the math by hand if you want to. But again, for the purposes of these videos demonstrations, it's really useful to sh show you how to do this using the tools that you're supposed to learn for our class anyways. And in the real world, that's, you know, people use these tools to perform their data analysis, minimizes your risks of error, um, makes your process both expedited and expedient. So we're gonna just use the tools. I'll show you how you can do it in Excel and JASP. So first, if you were gonna do it in Excel, we use our data analysis option and we can do our single factor ANOVA. We're gonna select our data. Notice I selected these labels, group one and two. Those aren't data values, those are the identifiers. So I'm gonna say, hey, I, I have labels in my first row. Don't try to treat that like data. And I'm gonna stick it right here so that we can see the output real easily. When I run this test, I'm gonna get my um, summary table, which is like the sums, the average, the variances. And I'm gonna get my F table, which has the sum of squares, the degrees of freedom, the mean square, the F and P value for the test. So these are the inferential values. Now, if I was gonna run this as a T test, I can go in here and I can get T test, and I'm gonna do a two sample assuming equal variance T test, my variable range one, my variable range two, Again, I have labels. We're expecting that they do not differ under the null hypothesis, and I'm gonna stick that output right next to it. And we're gonna get our output. Now notice here first, the averages, group one and group two, averages, group one and group two, same thing. Variances, group one and group two, variances, same thing. Sample size, same thing, right? Now let's look down at our test. So if we have a two-tailed t-test, what p-value do we get, right? right there, right? Here's our T value, and there's the two-tailed P value. Here is our F and our two-tailed. Notice the P values are identical, and the book wants you to also see that T squared, T squared equals F. Bam, right? These two values are identical. So that's what the book's trying to show you here, is that a T test and an F test are gonna give you the same answer. Now, if you wanted to run this type of analysis using JASP, we would need to do something different in how we organize this data. So let's open a new worksheet and see how we could do this in JASP. Now, JASP gets a whole lot more user-friendly um, as we start to progress in the types of analyses that we're doing. Now, if you remember, these two sets of scores belong to different groups, right? Group one and group two. So the group they belong to is a variable in and of itself. So the way JASP wants us to organize our data is by variables in columns. So I'm going to have a group column and I'm going to have a score or outcome column. All my scores are going to go in one column and their group identifications are going to go in the other column. So I had eight people in group one and I had eight people in group two. So now I've got eight and eight and the group is identified as a variable with a score that corresponds to the person in each group. So make sure those are aligned correctly. Once you've done that, you can easily take this into JASP. Now, remember, the easiest way to bring things into JASP is to save them as a CSV file. So 
I'm going to save this as JASP example on my desktop, and we'll open that here in a second using our JASP program. So here's JASP. We're going to go to open. We're going to find on my desktop the JASP example data. Here it is. And now I can quickly run independent sample t-test with group as my group variable and score as my outcome variable. And notice, those are the same things. The 2.3, that's the same value we got in right here, 2.23, right? That same p-value, 0.23, the same t-value. So I can quickly do that. And I could also go run my ANOVA, where group would be my factor and score would be my outcome. And here is those same answers, right? Real quick, real easy. A nice thing is you can also get a bunch of extra things really quickly, including things like the effect size with eta squared or partial eta squared or the adjusted omega squared. You can get all the descriptive statistics. You can check assumptions, run contrast, post hocs, all kinds of things. Like when we do factorial ANOVA, Simple main effects is very helpful. So there's a bunch you can do in JASP if you organize your data for JASP uh, as we're dealing with ANOVA, regression, and chi-square here at the end of class. But that is an example of how you could do number 24 using Excel or JASP.